After narrowly making their way through the mirror temple, Madeline carries Theo out into the brisk air on one of the many cliffs on the mountain. Exhausted, both of them collapse to the ground near what looks like a used and abandoned campsite. One of the first things they notice is the sun is nearly set and all they can see is a purple sky and a light snowfall on top of the mountain. After what seems like many hours later, Theo finally awakens to the beautiful night sky with not a cloud in sight, a warm fire, and Madeline there waiting to make sure he's alright. Madeline excitedly greets him as he wakes. Theo goes on talking about how he had a crazy dream, only to remember that it actually had happened, and also realize that the mountain contains a mysterious power, one that he didn't recognize until now. This leads to a long conversation between the two, about how Madeline reminds Theo of his sister, and that Theo's grandfather had actually visited the mountain long ago, and also about how depression affects Madeline. As a side note, this is an incredibly long conversation that I encourage you to watch the whole thing if you haven't already. It's one of my personal favorite conversations in the entire game, but I don't want to go over the entire thing because it's not super essential to the overall story, but I still recommend definitely watch it. Madeline wakes up in the middle of the night, but again things look different. The flames are green again, there's a beautiful sight of the northern lights illuminating the night sky. This is a very similar event to the first night Madeline has stayed on the mountain. The same night that Dark Madeline first came through the mirror. Across the way she sees a golden feather just floating off the ground. Madeline goes over and she touches it. And once she does it feels like she's almost lighter than air, begin rocketing upward towards the summit. It goes on and on until she finally peaks at the top of the mountain, suspended in midair. As she floats there in a circle, her form begins to split from herself and a familiar dark reflection emerges, floating in the air with her. The northern lights look so beautiful, Madeline says excitedly. Dark Madeline looks around nervously. Yeah, they are. Where are we? Madeline looks at her with much serious expression. We need to talk. Okay? I finally understand who you are. You're not my true reflection. I'm not, Dark Madeline responds, slightly confused. You're everything I need to leave behind. You're cruel, paranoid, and controlling. Almost looking insulted, Dark Madeline says back, Why would you say that? But Madeline looks at her with a smile. No, it's okay. I understand now. I don't need you anymore. So you're just... abandoning me? I'm setting you free, Madeline responds. We'll both be so much happier. Looking hurt by what Madeline just said, You're so... so... And then she lashes out. So stupid! The northern lights begin to fade and the dark tendrils begin to rise up towards them. You think you could just leave me behind? You think you could just blame everything on me? You think you're above me? Answer me! As she says this, one of the tendril reaches up and entangles Madeline. Calm down, please. Dark Madeline begins to circle her. Calm down? Madeline closes her eyes and says to herself, Breathe, Madeline. Use the feather. As she begins to concentrate on the feather like before, everything around her begins to fade away. She pulls forth in effort to remain focused, but piercing her mind, she hears Dark Madeline cry out. You're gonna think about a feather to stop me? She then forces Madeline to pay attention to her. You are not above me! You can't climb this mountain! It's time to accept that! After saying this, she pulls Madeline down. She's now back at the camp with Theo, but she's hanging on the edge of the cliff. Theo reaches out asking her what's happened, but it's too late. Madeline begins to fall, and fall, and fall, all the way to the bottom of the mountain. Luckily she lands in a large pool of water, but when she emerges, she sees a beautiful lush greenery, waterfall pouring down into more pools of water. She begins exploring the vast area looking for a way out, but to no avail. She does find a reflection on the surface of the wall, and then falls to her knees. I was so close. It's over now. Why won't she leave me alone? I hate her! But she's part of me. I'll never be able to get rid of her. And she was right. I couldn't climb the mountain. After what feels like hours of exploring, she approaches what looks like an elevator shaft with a crow. Possibly the same crow she's seen before, but then realizes anytime she sees that crow, the old woman isn't too far away. And as she moves closer, she sees the old woman sitting at the base next to the elevator. Oh, hello again, the old woman says. With a sour look, Madeline says back, Of course you're here. The old woman smiles. Calling it quits, I see. 
No, I fell. It's over. The old woman looks intently at her. That's probably for the best. The mountain doesn't pull any punches. Yeah, I get it, Madeline says. I wasn't strong enough to climb your stupid mountain. You can laugh at me again if you want. The old woman begins to laugh at her. I didn't mean actually laugh. She stops. Sometimes you gotta know when to throw in the towel. You'll get over it. Madeline moves a little closer. You know what? I had a lot of time to think climbing out of this cave, and I'm already over it. And then she turns around. That part of me was right. I can't do this. I'll just go home to my sad life and be miserable forever. You clearly aren't over it, the old woman says to her. Shut up, I know. I don't want to give up. But no matter how hard I try, she sabotages me every step of the way. The old woman continues looking her straight in the eye, never really changing her demeanor. A lot of kids come up here to climb the mountain, only to give up. It's a shame that you fell. I was starting to think you'd make it. What makes me so special? Madeline asks. I've never met someone so angry at themselves. And then she begins to laugh again. Honestly, I thought you'd reach the summit just to spite yourself. The girl you're talking about? It sounds like she's holding you back. Talk to her. Figure out why she's so scared. Madeline looks confused. You think she's scared? I guess I never thought of it that way. Stop wasting both of our time and go ask her. What have you got to lose? With a lot more to think about, Madeline heads out trying to find the dark part of herself. Luckily, she doesn't have to go too far. Just beyond where she spoke to the old woman, she finds a familiar dark tendril that haunts her, meaning that dark Madeline can't be much further. She follows it further and further down until she comes across dark Madeline sitting on the ground. Looking for me? Dark Madeline asks with her back still to Madeline. I thought you were done with me. That was a mistake. I'm sorry, Madeline replies. You think you've got this all figured out. You think you don't need me. Madeline stares at her. I said I'm sorry. We need to move past this. Dark Madeline raises off the ground to face Madeline. You expect me to trust you? Madeline stands firm. You aren't innocent here either, but I know you're scared. Look, we're at rock bottom. There's no point in fighting. Dark Madeline smiles back. I can keep digging. I can pull us down to the center of the earth. What would be the point? Let's climb out of here. Together. Come close to me and I'll make you regret it, Dark Madeline yells. Madeline begins to move forward, and as soon as she touches her, Dark Madeline lashes back and begins backing away, trying to keep Madeline away from her. Every time Madeline starts to move closer, Dark Madeline fights her. The terrain starts falling all around as Dark Madeline does everything she can to keep Madeline away. Madeline does everything she can to make sure Dark Madeline doesn't leave her sight. She's determined to get Dark Madeline to work with her. Probably the most determined we've seen her since she got to the mountain. While Madeline proceeds to follow her, Dark Madeline yells to her, I did you a favor! Madeline continues to move forward. You aren't a mountain climber! Madeline continues forward. I'm just trying to help you! None of this would have happened if you would have just listened to me! The chase becomes more and more intense. Now Dark Madeline flings the stones back and forth, making it harder and harder for Madeline to reach her. The chase goes on and on, until Madeline enters a room. And again, sitting in the center is Dark Madeline. <sighs> Fine. You win. I guess you don't need me after all. If you want me to go away, I'll try. Madeline averts her gaze. That's not what I want. I need your help now more than ever. Please, let's work together. Dark Madeline glances back at her. Work together? You're joking, right? Madeline moves closer and puts her hand on her shoulder. It's okay to be scared. As she says this, it feels like everything starts to slow down, and the beautiful greenery becomes noticeable again. And with that, Dark Madeline faces her. She wraps her arms around Dark Madeline, and their forms begin to merge. It's a new feeling for both of them, and for the first time in a long time, they feel at peace with each other. Working together, Madeline hastily climbs out. Now at peace with herself, the climb feels almost easier, as if there's less resistance. Reaching a landing point, their forms begin to separate again. Madeline feels that with them working together, they can surely reach the summit, although Dark Madeline still has her reservations. The elderly woman finds both of them, 
happy to see that they're playing nice with each other. Madeline thanks her for talking some sense into her earlier, and the old woman says she's just happy that she can be useful every now and then. Then in the distance, Madeline hears someone yelling her name. It's Theo. He comes running up in a hurry. He said that he made his way down to help, but it looks like she's okay. This conversation goes on for a bit, but it leaves Madeline ready and motivated to reach the summit. Alright, so this chapter was jam-packed with amazing dialogue, crazy turns of events, and a beautiful ending. The first thing I want to mention is the conversation between Madeline and Theo in the beginning. As I mentioned earlier, this is one of my favorite sets of dialogue in the entire game. Not because it holds some deeper meaning, or because it's super impactful to the story, but because how genuine it feels. There's so much to relate to in this conversation, and anyone that knows how it feels to be depressed or have anxiety has most likely had a conversation just like this at some point in their life, and that's what makes it so special. I feel like Theo represents a lot of things in this game, but to me, he represents the part of society who doesn't understand what it's like to suffer from mental health issues. Not the people who tell you it don't exist or that it's all in your head, but the people who want to understand, but they just don't know what it's like. Theo tells Madeline that his sister also suffers from anxiety and depression, and that he just doesn't know how to help her because he doesn't understand it. Next thing is the fall. After their encounter in the Mirror Temple and she talks to Theo, Madeline feels as though she finally understands what her dark counterpart is. She thinks that dark Madeline represents everything that she hates about herself. While she wasn't really wrong, her solution as to get rid of her was the thing that really made her hit rock bottom. She feels as though she needs to set her free and this will make everything better, by tossing her problems to the side and not dealing with the consequences. As we saw, dark Madeline did not take kindly the idea. While she was mad, she was mostly just hurt that Madeline was trying to get rid of her. Because in Dark Madeline's mind, she was just trying to help. Because of Madeline's solution to the problem, Madeline falls down the mountain, both physically and mentally, to a point where everyone has been in their life, rock bottom. So instead of giving up like she wanted to, the old woman makes her realize that she has to confront herself and recognize this is a part of her, and learn how to work together with her so she can finally be at peace with herself. So when she attempts to, it's a long and difficult fight with herself that takes time, a lot of time. And even after her success, there was still doubt. Dark Madeline still shows reservations about climbing the mountain, but puts her reservations aside because Madeline believed in her. So she believed in Madeline. It's a sign that it's possible to forgive yourself, it just takes time, and that's okay. Not everything can be solved in a day, a month, or even a year. Sometimes it just takes a while, and learning to accept yourself for the way you are instead of constantly fighting it makes all the difference in the world. I hope you guys enjoy this one because it was a really big chapter with so much in it. It's one of the things that made me fall in love with this game and why it will always be special to me. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you guys next time.